We're out of 5,000. It's 5, 6, ooh, 614. We're headed up the mountain dog. You already know what it is. And we got, you can't really tell, this is a clutch, clutch parking spot. <sighs> so, I got a headache like hell. Probably haven't drank enough water since I've been home. I didn't have any sugar yesterday either, so uh, that might be it too. Is that Ern? Why are you all the way over there? Ern's all the way across the parking lot. He could have just pulled up front. That'd make no sense. Why are you parked so far away? What a fucking dipshit. <laughs> all right, it's time to go shred. How do you already have snow on your face? Do I? Yeah. Stoned. I know I haven't been in the vlog in a minute. Yeah, are you even are you even part of the team anymore? I mean, we had a podcast yesterday. You can catch me on Oh It's Teddy TV podcast section. <laughs> um, you catch me here. Or at some stupid ass hardcore show. Or It's amazing. You get stuck in. UPS, so anyway, I don't know how to address this. I'm not trying to put this company on blast or anything. Basically, I ordered a product. A ta I ordered a tattoo machine. It's that new dildo rotary thing that I don't even know if I'm gonna like. She was like $1,177. Today, I, most of it's later. I ate my steak earlier. I'm eating some bacon. I know I'm eating a lot of meat, but I'm not eating any sugar right now, because I feel like shit. The next day, the next day, put up a sale for 20% off of exactly what I ordered based on their website, it should have met me in Texas. That was the whole thing. It was gonna meet me in Texas. It did not ship. They emailed me and apologized that they had delay in shipping. I'm like, well guys, it's going to the wrong address now. Can we just ship it to my address? And they say, no, there's nothing we can do about it. And they shipped it anyway. Today, actually, it shipped today. Say, hey, you guys just did a 20% discount. Could you honor that for me since I just ordered? And that's kind of a big, that's like 200 and some bucks, man. You know, like, hook me up. They said, no, well, we can't do anything about that either because you placed your order after the discount. So I say, well, why don't I just return this one and order at the discounted rate? Not only is there a discount code to give you 20% off, they reduced the price of the set that, was, that I ordered that was sold out, sold out as a set last week. So this product that was $1,177 just got shipped for $800 or just got ordered. It won't ship for a couple of days, but ridiculous. And now I have to go through all this trouble. The company didn't want to just give me the difference or anything or honor the discount. So now I have to have it returned, credit, this, that, and the third. It's like 300 bucks. <sighs> ridiculous. Leaving? Oh shit, yeah, well, I'll be vlogging though. Oh yeah, that's what I'm, that's actually what I'm, that's actually why I'm recording. Vlogging, I'll okay. be. I'll wait for your footage. I'll be at Frosted, Frosty's Frosting's video game tournament, <laughs> vlogging live. Jesus Christ. So, vlogging live, eh? Vlogging from my hotel, Chicago, the streets, everywhere. It's gonna be lit. All right, we'll see. I'll Have see fun. You. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Peace. What's bothering you? I'm fucking sick of Baby Yoda. <laughs> why? Because he's dumb, and it doesn't matter, and it's not even Baby Yoda in the first place. I haven't even seen the movie. It's a no. movie. It's a show. <coughs> Whatever. That disconnected from it that I don't even know it's a show. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's not even Baby Yoda. It's future Baby Yoda. Fuck future Baby Yoda. He gets punched in the face though in the show. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. I didn't watch the show either. I tried. I watched one episode. Now Build the Bear has the Baby Yodas. I figured that was the- I don't feel that good. After Houston, I just started to like feel sluggish and slow down. Way too much shit happening. Oh yeah.
I don't know if I was just tired trying to juggle too many things at once, whatever. But today, I and yesterday, this headache is just fucking brutal. So I'm gonna try and go get a massage today because it might be because of also when I tattoo, I'm like this. And when I'm like bent over like this, my neck get all fucking crazy, especially since after my car accident where I got my neck all fucked up. So it gets really bad if I don't really, I don't take that good of care of myself, but I should, I should probably take way better care of myself. So this is my effort of not being like a big bitch ass because I keep trying to be like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And I don't really do it, or I do it for like a week and then I'm like, meh. Be conscious more of what the fuck's going on so that the machine that is me can run more efficiently. Today, I'm not running that efficiently. I feel like shit. I also have to do my schedule for Chicago today. If you haven't emailed me by now, I might already be full, but as the moment of this recording, I don't really know. So if you've been waiting, you should email me. You should email me like right now, teddytattooMe at gmail.com. I'm gonna be in Chicago from the 5th to the 10th, and Dirty Aaron will be with me, who is in Chicago right now. Do we have any footage from Dirty Aaron? Do we? Oh, footage from Dirty Aaron? No? Okay. Um, the pizza challenge is on hold. Just gotta, we gotta take care of number one first. You know what I'm saying? And it's just getting a little crazy. Continue to snowboard, go to the gym, pay attention to what we're eating a little better. I bought a dildo tattoo machine, right? And some people are probably like, what the fuck? Hold on, let me get you an example here. It's a random, regular standard tattoo machine. This is one of circuit. It's a rotary. Different, different motors. One is magnets, spring load up, blah, blah, blah. The other is a motor that spins and slides back and forth. Here's a third set of, which is kind of an in-between, I guess, sort of, not really. Which is also a rotary, which spins and then makes the needle go back and forth. The new machines that now take cartridges instead of a full needle and tube, usually there's a needle here and a tube that you hold on to. Instead of that, it's all one piece, like that, which isn't really one piece, but take a Sharpie and make it thicker like a fucking dildo. And then there's a hole at the end and then you put the cartridge in and you turn it and then you can... It's much more efficient, fast, safe, sanitary. I mean, everything's pop out. Yeah, it's crazy how crazy it is. I've been out for a few years. I've been super anti one, but I broke down because everybody in Texas is telling me how fucking great they are. Like dudes who've been tattooing 34 years. I love the tradition of these things. Like I love these machines. There's nothing wrong with it. If you get tattooed and someone's using one of these versus this or a dildo, it really doesn't matter. Whatever gets the job done for the person. But I'm always trying to expand, you know, making things better. The moral of the story is, last drop that we had with the the gentleman painting over the logo in red and white sold out in seconds to the people who aren't friends and family. Now you could sign up for friends and family and save yourself this trouble, but I get it. Some of y'all just like the excitement, you know? You like the possibility of taking L's. Fuck, maybe you even like taking L's. I can't help you any further than you want to be helped. I am going to restock that design in black and white only. Also blue for friends and family. There's also going to do the Spirit of Ecstasy as a restock as well. There's not a fucking ton of them. Probably be it for a while, so maybe ever. Who knows? You never know. Tomorrow's not promised. That'll be in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, business as usual. There's a new game out. This uh, I don't even think it's even new. I think it's been out for a while, but I downloaded a date like a while ago. Escape from Tarkov. Uh, make my headache even fucking worse and try to play this game. Some beef stew going down in here. It's just literally beef and bone broth. This bone broth, which is actually really fucking good. So I'm trying to prepare. I feel like the biggest reason I don't eat the way that makes my body feel best because I'm not prepared. All right, I'm gonna eat figure out the rest of my life. I get my meat locally a lot, pause. Mark Six, Oliver's Meat Market. It's another guy's name, Tony's. Tony and Oliver, I think those are it. Those are my favorite places, local. I've been doing Butcher Box, which is what this is. But then they also discovered this place, Colorado Craft Beef, which is up in Breckenridge. Canceled Butcher Box, started Colorado Craft Beef. That's that's where we're sourcing from, if you care. Some of you are probably gonna go fuck, Teddy, it's meat, but it matters. All right, guys. Oh yeah. When I started testing these. Test wearing the boost insoles. Test wear. I'll have to tell you soon. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> Didn't see the name on this. I don't know who the fuck sent this to me, but shout out. Alex threw away the package. But shout out to whoever sent this to me. I do appreciate it. It's called Bulldog Polo. I know who you are because you tweeted me. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm an asshole. Uh, my headache feels a little better to me right now. I went, got a massage. I felt great. I played Escape from Tarkov for about... <sighs> Six minutes, what a terrible fucking game. What are you people doing? I saw all these tweets about how amazing it is, how addictive it is. It's fucking boring, dog. I, slow video games in 2020? No, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, thank you. It's fucking ridiculous. That game is boring as shit. Prove me wrong. 
Prove me wrong. I ain't never got time for this shit, man. I ain't never got time for that. Speaking of which, I fucked up my food earlier. So those pieces of steak. Fucked up a couple of top round jammers. I thought were just like steaks, but I read the shit wrong, and they weren't just steaks. They're like top round, and I thought they were like eye of round. I ended up adding them to my little stew here, which isn't a stew at all. So I added them in here. This does not look appetizing really. Trust me, it's good, it's just meat. These are my original pieces, and then I tried to salvage it by adding this. It's probably okay, but it's probably a little dry. Probably a little dry, we'll see. Yeah, it's okay. Not amazing. Edible. It's a halfway fail. It's not that good. Just dry. Alex went out to dinner. I'm chilling. I might twitch something else. Ern has no footage yet. I just texted him. He said tomorrow night. So, it's fucking morning. Ugh, we're going to meet Rick for breakfast. Headache is pretty much gone, I think. Definitely feel a lot better today. Breakfast with Rick. Got some eggs and some bacon. Feeling good. We're uh, basically today. I need to work on the next lookbook stuff or just kind of draw or maybe go down to the studio and do like a start a painting but I still need a drawing so I can probably draw at home and if I want to go to the studio and blow it up maybe do that but first I gotta go get some fucking groceries. We don't have any steak at the house. Well we do but it's all frozen and it's not. We don't have any ribeyes. I want some ribeye. Doing alright. Probably a couple of things. Um, guess I'll maybe grab like a New York strip and then maybe two ribeyes. Pretty good. Went and got breakfast. And now I'm coming to get lunch and dinner, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Stop. We stopped to wash the whip. Old baby girl ain't been washed in a minute, son. Gotta wash the bitch off. We don't have, Erd's out of town, so we won't have a podcast this weekend. One thing that's gonna have to be discussed, because it's just being, it's it's all over the internet, and I hate that, I hate that this is even a topic of discussion, I think. But, at the same time, we discuss things. That's what we do in this world. We talk. Before we even jump into it, understand that this is all an ideology, you know? None of this shit really fucking matters in the grand scheme of life. There are some things that I feel people should evaluate so that their lives are more enriched, and it doesn't come from bullshit. Kai Somar, I have no problem. You know, we're not close. We don't go to Thanksgiving or anything together. But he made a tweet about Kylie, about people being mad at Kylie Jenner for wearing shoes that they technically can't afford, which isn't true. But also, it's not the point. No one's mad at Kylie Jenner for wearing SBs. The whole SB resurgence in general, 100% feels manufactured. And maybe it's anchored because I lived through SB the first time, like how they retro Jordans that's really aggravating. You know, I just prefer if shoe companies would move forward and not backward all the time. Kind of feels like a little bit of a conspiracy with the fashion powers that be. Call me crazy. Put a tinfoil hat on me if you want. Virgil comes out and says, it's all about going into your closet and pulling out your old shit. There's nothing new to buy. Streetwear is dead. How many more new this, new that's can you buy? And then you have Kylie coming out with shoes that no one's give a fuck about in at least 10 years. There's been some core dudes who love them and will always love SBs, but it, it not like how what they're trying to create now. It's all based on the fact that like two people are wearing these stupid ass shoes because one of them has music that people like and the other one is a Kardashian. It's to follow the leadership. If it was a new thing, some new tech or like a new shoe or a new take or anything like that i guess personally i could appreciate it differently but when it's just like going back into the archives of some shit you know kylie jenner and have no part of which is also okay right like when you're young and you didn't get to experience sb you could go back through it and see what all this stuff is but i don't really feel like that's the case here this is someone on a road of discovery where they just discovered like oh what there was this era of shoes with Nike where they did this SB thing and it was oh damn it was made in a small sample factory and they used really good materials and all oh, they created stories surrounding it oh that's sick by the way the MF Doom is not a classic SB shoe in my opinion that shit came out a little too late for me like just at the end I'm pretty sure it came out after the Maneki Neko drop I could be wrong but for me most things stopped with the Maneki Neko after that just for me got silly uh, as things tend to do but yeah it's just weird it's not in any way am i mad at kylie or Travis or anyone in this world for what they choose to wear what is aggravating is watching people who have no fucking identity whatsoever flock from thing to thing to thing to thing just so they can be a part of the conversation just so they can feel like they fit in and that is the part of this whole sneaker shit 
is whack. Like if I had gone from Boost, man, Boost is the most comfortable thing ever, blah, blah, blah. SB for life, I, this is what I used to rock, so I'm gonna rock this. It would completely contradict everything I said about the comfort of the shoe. I am now putting myself on the line, martyr, if you will, and I just wear fucking Kith hiker joints and my Yeezy 500s which I refer to as the devil easy. I even have a few pairs of shoes downstairs that didn't sell. I might just dump them, you know? Have one pair of shoes. It's been great. It's been great. You know, I've bowed out of the game, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna watch. It's kind of like one of those scenes in the movie where the star player gets hurt and he's watching the finals from his hospital bed. I'm the guy in the hospital bed in this scenario. Except I'm not in the hospital bed. I actually feel great today. There was an article written as well by a guy who I like. His take seems to be that Kylie's the best thing for shoes because Kylie gets people interested in shit. But that, to me, is the opposite of what like, a subculture is. Subculture, to me, like tattooing or sneakers or anything that people like art people get into it's personal you personally curate your taste on things you take little pieces of things and you build your own version of them and for me when i just see droves and droves of people on the internet buy into something just because other people are buying into it i get a little sad a little sad for y'all not sad for me it doesn't affect me but it is something to comment on you know it is something to kind of look at and go huh that's peculiar led by the masses i shouldn't have any other idea that it's anything different but that is not what a line with me as an individual and someone who doesn't necessarily want to be identified only by what the fuck they're wearing. And I make clothes, but I just try to make clothes that I think look cool. I don't try to make them cool by fucking putting them on all kinds of people or making them unattainable or, you know, whatever. Making like one one shirt for the weekend and nobody else. Like, I don't fuck all that shit. You know, if I'm making one shirt for somebody and nobody else, it's gonna be me. It's all weird. And then people have to keep co-signing some of this shit because they work in the sneaker world, you know? If you work in the sneaker world and the entire fabric of what it's built on, if you talk about the fact that it's all superficial and fucking fake, and if we're really giving a fuck about what Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner are wearing to the point where it's driving our decisions, our purchases, like, that's a deep deeper issue that needs to be fucking personally delved into. Look at some of these new SBs and understand that this is some middle of the mall shit. They look 6.0-ish, a lot of them. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with just the internet age of wanting to be able to constantly have something to post about. You know people are rocking with, they can relate to. I understand. I, I live through it. I gotta tell you, there's no end to that shit. Losing your own personal sense of style and taste and this, that, and the third. Dog, you're gonna come out a drone, a drone clone. You don't want that either. That's how I feel about Kylie Jenner wearing SBs, which probably has really awesome, almost nothing to do with Kylie Jenner wearing SBs. The blogs hype it up like it's this big deal. They make it seem like it's news, and then we have to look at it and digest it. I'm just here to, you know, I'm just here to stand against the current. Maybe I shouldn't think about it so deeply. It doesn't really matter, but. And I know the shoes came from Franelations. Shout out to Franelations. I don't really understand, like, why that, some people are saying that that's like a, that makes it more legit. They don't really... Like them selling them the shoes in a cosign, it'd be no different than buying them from StockX or JC or any anything like that. You know, like inclusivity doesn't really uh, doesn't seem to really matter to me. I don't I don't know what that matters. It just means that an OG sneakerhead like Fran uh, curated it, hooked it up. Okay, Fran got paid for some shoes, just like a lot of people do every day. I just I just don't get it. I guess like, someone can explain it to me. I'm down to hear a different opinion. Then Nike's probably going to lean way fucking into this shit. You know that this is a long, long con with Nike. They've been trying to revamp the S. But my main beef, like, we're just revamping. It's the same old shit. It's the same exact consistent beef that I've had with Jordan Brand. You know, it's the same fucking shoes over and over again. And at the end of the day, they are just shoes. It really doesn't matter. But as a consumer, uh, what was so exciting about Boost is it was something new. And maybe that's like a problem is that I want something new all the time. Like I'm looking for the next thing, you know, but that's evolution. I, I would like to think footwear didn't peak um, in the 80s or the 90s or even in the <laughs> 2015s. I'd like to think that it evolves and I would stay into it. Just like anything, like a comic book, a TV series, you know, you want it to roll and roll and roll until it ends, but you want it to end tastefully. Like Adidas is no better. Adidas is leaning on every celebrity in the world to try to sell shoes. I 
don't give a fuck about celebrities. I just don't, don't work like that. There's also the history of the SB to consider, you know? Uh, a lot of people don't know or remember or aren't around, but when Nike tried to get in to skateboarding originally, that shit did not fly. Everybody tried. Puma, Reebok, ugh, Nike, tried everything. Some people were even boycotting ES, America, Etnies, all that because it was owned by Soltech. And Soltech, Soltech is basically a division of Nike. So back in the heyday of skateboarding, you know, 90s, 2000s, early 2000s, that shit wasn't flying. Like, not at all. Skaters were anti-corporation like a motherfucker. And you know, skateboarding obviously blew up to be really corporate. Part of that happened with Nike, because Nike SB pumped a lot of money into skateboarding. They put a lot of money into a lot of shit. They came out with some good product. The first Nike SBs, they had a lot of really good riders. It was new, it was fresh. Everything was made in a sample house. SB, skateboarding, which I hold very near dear into my heart, you know? So maybe this is my, I'm one of those Jordan dudes who's like, no, this ain't the original, this ain't the 85. It's just weird to see. When Nike did get into SB, things definitely shifted. They shifted for skateboarding. Culturally, with the sneaker world, we'll argue those are like the first real collectible shoes. We're so far removed from, you know, streetwear and skateboarding essentially, like really, which is where streetwear comes from. Poster child is people like Kylie and Tiger, or not Tiger, uh, Travis Scott. Those people don't skateboard or have anything to do with skateboarding or know anything about the light, the real like lifestyle of a skateboarder, especially from when those shoes came out. That's all. I don't know. Shits are like time capsules, I think. Ta shoes are more like time capsules to me. That's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know why I care. I shouldn't care. Don't really care. It's not keeping me up at night. I care enough to talk about it. My man Nick brought up a good point on Twitter. <clears throat> Essentially, some of that can trickle down <clears throat> where if there is a high interest in SB, real true core skateboarders and people who do who are passionate about these projects and things will get the opportunity to create something new and cool. I hope that that is the case. That would be cool. Personally, I just don't know how that can be done in a way that's impressive. The last few things from SB that we've seen are not, in my opinion, impressive. The new Ray Gun is absolutely awful. The product at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm never gonna wear it again. It would take a lot, you know, it would take a lot. I'd put one on a shelf as an art piece before I would wear it probably. Yeah, if that trickles down into core skateboard brands, um, feeding their families and having input, in the SB line so that it has something to do with skateboarding still, then I think that's great. If these get in the hands of skateboarders who actually want to wear them, I think that's great. But everything after that, the fashion part of it afterwards, is secondary to me. I skated on every SB I ever had. Jedi's, Puss Heads, everything, everything. Carhartt's, everything. Carhartt's are still nasty, I ain't gonna lie, but I ain't buying them. If we gauge everybody on what bullshit price they can afford on things um, in a falsely inflated market most of the time, you know, it's all based off hype, then, you know, what the, what the fuck? You know, that's not good. And it becomes, it gets like real ego-y, you know? And I'm not talking shit about Kais because Kais just has some hot takes that are ice cold. We disagree on a lot of things, but we're still cool with each other. It's not a problem. I disagree with everybody. I'm here to disagree a little bit when I disagree. Speak my mind. <laughs> needs to be spoken. You gotta wake up a little bit. You gotta like what you like. Yeah, wear what you like, but why do you like it? You ever ask yourself why I like this thing? You ever really dive deep down, ask yourself, yeah. why do I like this? Probably not. I and mean, if you did, might not find some freedom in that thought. Maybe you won't. Maybe some people just, hey, some people don't live exciting lives and this shit is just fun. You know, it's just fun. Something to get into. It's like sports. Shout out to the Astros, you cheating bastards. I don't even care. I think if you can steal bases, you can steal signals. I say we just pump everybody full of steroids, bring in AI, and make baseball great again. Make it insane. Move the fucking fence back another couple hundred feet. Release wild animals during the games. Whatever. Let's make this shit exciting. Let's get into this gladiator-ish vibe. Future gladiator. Gladiator 2K. Anyway, I might be done ranting about all this shit. I don't know how many points I need to make on how I feel. I feel like I needed to make them. Alright, I just grilled up a steak. Little change of plans. I'm waiting on footage from Earn, and I'm waiting on footage to upload on Dropbox. And Bad Boys for Life just came out. It's like one o'clock. I don't think Alex cares about Bad Boys. I asked her if she cares. She ain't answered me back. I bought tickets anyway. So I'm gonna eat the steak, and then I'm gonna go see Bad Boys. All right, Bad Boys for Life. We're leaving. It's pretty good. I mean, it's an action movie, so it's ridiculous as fuck, you know? Like, super ridiculous. As ridiculous as the story goes. I do think it's pretty good. It's a good twist. Explains a lot, you know? A deep dive inside of who Mike Lowry really is. Where he came from and where he's going, you know? I'm glad I came and saw it. It was an empty ass theater, so you know that's always a plus. There's no one around. Bring you down. 
So now at 4.30 p.m. we're gonna drive home. I give it a 7.8. All right, let's go home. Let's do this. Bob's like, you're fucking crazy, you're going to the emergency room. Alright, here we go. 71 hot dogs. I'm going way too slow to finish. What do you mean? You think I go faster, bro? There's still so many left. <laughs> this is only the first box out of three. Oh, man. Oh, dude, these guys are slamming them. Finish these. I'm either going to finish them or have a heart attack first. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> they're not even good. They're not even good. I don't even know if they're chicken or beef. But they're filling me up, dude. They're filling me up. I'm gonna end up with 28 tacos. You only think I got four more in me? Yeah, I don't think. I streamed myself eating a ball of mayo one time. I didn't have a heart attack. Slamming these dogs, bro. That's gotta be so gross. Uh... I'll make my mom proud. You guys are really hugging me up, but uh, I'm already getting filled up, dude. <laughs> He's in fucking three! You're in three! What? I don't know how I'm full, dude. It's so gross, that's probably why. So unappetizing. <laughs> Thank you for the- stomach, homie. I'm gonna expand, bro. I'm gonna Sorry. try. Oh. He spent $50, but he did Shit. He spent $50, but only 36 tacos. I don't know, that was a lot, dude. That was hard to do. <laughs> yeah, we're almost done with the first box. Dude, my room smells so bad. I was towed in my car. Uh, when you come back, I'll either be throwing up, crying, or... Still slamming talk. My face is gonna look like that, don't you worry. So sad right now. He's so his How face did you is fucking just, watch that while you're you soggy shit. bread? God, I'm such a failure. Roy, come over. Dude, look, they're all right there. Yeah, yeah, sit. Sit like right here. Dude, honestly, I might turn the fan on because it smells bad in here. So we got Roy in here. We got Roy in here. We got Roy in here. He's gonna slam some tacos. He's gonna help out. We got this, bro. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Roy, Roy's gonna help me out, bro. Let's get the counter up. Let's get the counter up. What are you Dude, gonna... slamming them. Let's go. Oh, you gotta keep going. Oh my god. Roy, I'm gonna. There's still so many. Oh, hey, what's up, stream? It's uh, Cloud underscore Pox here. So bad in his room. Let me tell you. I walked in and it instantly smelled like fucking cheap taco. <laughs> Yo, he donated 20 bucks. <laughs> he did, he did. I think I eat two right there. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't even keep track. I'm not putting one in my mouth and having my dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. That, no, that's like... <laughs> that's easy, bro. I guess if I just... It's $30. All right. Yeah, I'll give you like... I'll give you some, bro. No. <laughs> no dude, fucking way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? I know it's been a little while on and off the vlog. Check me in the podcast, though, for those of you who said I'm slipping and I'm not out here in the vlog. But where I am is in O'Hare Airport in Chicago. Teddy and I will actually be back in Chicago for him to do tattoos next month. I'm here for a gaming convention. Didn't vlog the airport on the way here. It was four in the morning. Not too much excitement going on. I've had a few beers. You know, I had to. And when I ordered a beer at 6 a.m., I think everybody in first class looked at me, which is weird. The guy in front of me told me I was this hero. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, I'm here. Um, it's not Chicago, it's Wheeling, Illinois. So I'm not even near the city of Chicago. Or am I really near too much of anything? Um, just hit the gym, because my fat ass needs it. Also, the room I got, it's great, except that uh, the air conditioning is not working and it's 75 degrees in here. I'm waiting on maintenance. They were just here. They're coming back. Hopefully they can fix this issue. I'm trying to uh, go get a haircut and uh, that's about it right now. I'm out here vlogging though. I'm out here motherfucking vlogging when you think I wouldn't be. That's how I do because I am a vlogger. I'm going to show the world how I vlog. Oh. Okay, gotta make sure I have my key. I don't think I do. God, this shit is crazy. There is gamers everywhere. They're playing fighting games right now in the lobby. We're now headed downstairs. 
I like to narrate every movement, even though you can see it. There's not even a joystick, it's just buttons. This shit's crazy. Dude, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Some of them just have buttons, they don't have the joystick. All right, day one, the real day one. Here we go, I'm headed down to the lobby. Tournaments start today. It's looking real nice up in here now. To play this kind of series like I do. Japanese. This, this is, is your game? game? Yeah, oh. well it's not like a game I made, but. No, like, no, I get it, but I mean, but, you yeah, brought it. And yeah, I brought it. Fighting? Yeah, there's a Sailor Moon fighting game too. Is this for, uh, isn't it Genesis? Yeah, the only reason I have it. Well, it's that one, they only made one for the Super Nintendo. Um, the one that they made for the Genesis was a Streets of Rage beat em up. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, Sailor here. Moon's like uh, Japan's attempt at uh, Western style superheroes. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Well, it just but, follows like Super Sentai. Which yeah, it just, follows Super yeah. Sentai, but it also borrowed from a lot of Western superhero trips. That too. Yeah. There's the fact that that's the thing that really hooked me on it back when Toonami was a thing as a kid was like, whoa, this is like, uh, Mar this is like Marvel and DC except Japanese. Right.